Menopause is an inevitable transition in every woman's life, but what if there was a way to delay its onset? And what if that was by engaging in a basic physiological need like sex? Well, that's exactly what a recent study investigated and here to walk us through its findings and what they could potentially mean for the more than 165 million women in the United States is the lead investigator herself. Welcome to the Clinician's Roundtable on ReachMD. I'm Dr. Paul DeGramji, and joining me today is Megan Arnott, a PhD candidate in the Department of Anthropology at the University College London and lead author of a study examining sexual activity and age of menopause. Thanks so much for joining us today, Megan. Thanks for having me. So before we jump right into the study findings, I'd like to hear more about how you started exploring the potential link between sexual activity and menopause. What sparked this line of research for you? We were just sort of researching the menopause in general and noticed that married women were going through the menopause slightly later than unmarried women. We were just trying to work out why that might be and I wondered whether sexual frequency might have some kind of relationship with marital status and therefore a relationship with age of menopause. So I thought we'd test it and it turns out that there is something going on there. Well, that's very interesting. So now that we have that background information then, let's dive into some of the details here. How was this study conducted and who were you following to get a representative patient sampling? We used data that already existed. So there's a longitudinal study being conducted in America as we speak that started in the 1990s. And they collect data annually on just under 3,000 women. And all this data is available online. So we, we took the data from online and, and analyzed it. And they have a repre representative sample. So they target different ethnic groups to try and make sure that it's representative of every woman within the United States. So what kind of characteristics were you looking for in the women represented in the study, like the age, the amount of physical and or sexual activity, the number of sexual partners, and other factors that weighed in? How were the characteristics formulated? So we didn't look at how many sexual partners, we just looked at how often they had sex. And so the study already had a variable that asked women whether they had sex daily, weekly, monthly, less than monthly. And they also had the different kinds of sex. So it wasn't just intercourse, it was oral sex, masturbation, stuff like that. So we just created the sex index that stated whether a woman had any kind of sex, either weekly, monthly, or less than monthly. And then we also included standard variables within the study, like socioeconomic position, how many children they've had, the age at which they had their first period, just sort of standard characteristics like that. And what age groups did you look at? The women in the first interview were aged between 42 and 52, so it varied, but it was on average about 52 at the first interview. So let's run through some of the results then. What did you find? We found that women who had sex more, so women who had sex at least weekly were at any given age the least likelihood to go to menopause. And then women who had sex at least monthly were, again, less likely to go through the menopause. And then the women who had sex less than monthly were most likely to enter menopause at any given age. Did the type of sexual activity matter at all? No, we included all of them in just one variable, so we made a sex index. But if we looked at all of them individually, they all had a similar effect on age of menopause. And did the frequency of sexual activity also have anything to do with the delay of menopause? Yes, yeah, so the women who had the most amount of sex went through the menopause later. Was there a specific uh, amount, like uh, once or twice a week or more than once or twice a week or several times a month? It was weekly, monthly, less than monthly variables, so don't have any uh, specific numbers. And what about living with a partner? Did that affect the age at which menopause begins? We looked at that as well. So we looked at whether a woman lived with a man, so a, either a sexual partner that's a man or just a man in general, so it could be a family member or a male friend, and neither seem to have any relationship with um, age menopause, interestingly. And did you look at same-sex engagement versus heterosexual activity? No, there wasn't a massive amount of people that are in same-sex relationships within the study, so there wasn't really enough sample size to include that. For those just tuning in, this is the Clinician's Roundtable on Reach MD. I'm Dr. Paul DeGramji, and today I'm speaking with anthropologist Megan Arnott from the University College London about a recent study linking sex frequency to age of menopause. So now that we've covered what the study entailed and what was found, let's talk about the potential impacts. So based on these results, Megan, how do you think this may affect the outlooks of menopause for women who come across this study? Well, the results are quite provisional and we don't quite understand the direction of causation yet. 
we hope that further research might allow women to be more autonomous about their age for menopause and take actions which may encourage menopause or delay it, depending on perhaps which way they want to go. But just um, hopefully it will empower women with more knowledge of how they can take control of their own fertility. In turn, how do you think this might impact the overall views on menopause from women's health professionals? From experience, it doesn't seem that health professionals talk about the menopause that much with women of the menopausal age. So hopefully it will just get the dialogue open between clinicians and between patients and just get people talking about the menopause a little bit more because at the moment people don't really talk about it too much. You know, potentially professionals that are talking to their patients may just give them that option that if you want to delay your menopause, increasing sexual activity might be one of the ways of doing so. Can you see that happening? If more research finds support for our findings, then yeah, it would be a great way for women to be able to delay their menopause because it didn't just include sex with partner, it included self-stimulation as well. So it's something that people can do by themselves to delay menopause. And looking ahead here, Megan, what's next on the horizon for you and your colleagues Will there be another line of investigations extending from this study sometime down the road? Hopefully the next step will be replicating the results using a different data set. We're just trying to find data sets that have both variables on sexual frequency and age of menopause, which is actually quite hard to find because sexual frequency is a sensitive topic and not all studies ask about age of menopause. So hopefully we'll be able to find more data on it. So this study was conducted in women in the United States, is that correct? Yeah, that's right. Do you plan on conducting similar studies in other countries or in other cultures? Yeah, I'm looking at data from the UK at the moment, which I think we'll, we'll be able to replicate on, hopefully. Other cultures are sometimes a bit harder talking about sex and also just how sex is used within relationships and stuff like that. So I, I think different cultures will be a bit trickier. Well, Megan, I'd like to thank you for joining me to talk about these study-driven insights on the potential links between sexual activity and age of menopause. It was great having you on the program today. Thank you for having me. So I'm Dr. Paul DeGramji, and you've been listening to the Clinician's Roundtable on ReachMD. To access this episode and others in this series, visit reachmd.com slash clinician's roundtable where it can be part of the knowledge. Thanks for joining us.